I used to do teacher workshops. In those teacher workshops, I would tell the teachers, you should train your students to go out and find stories in your community. Well, we don't have any stories. Yes, you do. Walk out your back porch where you're standing, there's a story. And when you find it, it's your job to tell it. I've been around a long time, long time. I've been accused of a whole assortment of things. A musician, people have accused me of being a historian. I guess I'm a, an amateur Arkansas historian. Folklorist, well, I've learned a lot at the Folk Center. I'm not a trained folklorist. And I write. I've always written songs and, and other things. You know that old term, jack of all trades, master of none? I guess that's me, pretty much. The stories that go with Arkansas people can be as different from one another as the Spring River is different from a creek called Champanol. What follows is just a handful of those stories, kind of like the first fragments taken from the diamond pipe, leaving an unimaginable number yet to be found. Got involved with old-time music when I came here to Mountain View to be on staff when the Ozark Folk Center opened. But I would guess if you're going to just count heads and say where is the single biggest pool of people who understand and do traditional music, I would bet is right here. Well, when Vicki and I moved up here, I was working at AETN then. I commuted two hours each way. And the first morning that I was making that, that drive, it just happened that I had read an article about uh, a fellow from actually right up here, walking home after the, uh, at the end of the Civil War. That was on my mind. And uh, I got some ideas and I turned them on a cassette recorder and got home that night and actually wrote some stuff down. And that was the first of what became this Arkansas Stories project. But he walked toward his Ozark home. We produced three CDs. They're probably 50 or 60, maybe 70 songs all together. And goodness, I couldn't tell you the live performances we did. But I would get into a research for a topic, and I would come across a book that covered that, and I would, I'd really like to have that. So this is Arkansas history stuff. Age by age and phrase by phrase. The setting for this is literally right out the window up here. At that moment, we have the Shawnee and the Cherokee, but mainly Shawnee, settling on the west bank of the White, white settlers on the uh, east bank of the White. Both of these sets of folks were in new country. The Cherokee, the Shawnee had been removed from their homelands. They were in a new place. The white settlers were coming from someplace else. They were in a new place. Here they lived by the river, said to be a boundary line. Eastern banks for the white man, western banks for her kind. Mark Twain had a line that I really like. History doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. I think we don't understand where we are or where we're going. If we don't understand how we got here, the more, the more you dig in, you find wonderful stuff. You find not wonderful stuff. You celebrate one, and you learn from the other and maybe you're a little bit better equipped to move ahead. Think about what's now coming. Now they dwell together somewhere past the sun where the people 
are all as one.